Welcome into the All-22 Daily. Yesterday, we finished our conversation on the top quarterback profiles. Today, let's dive into running backs. And Ray, I'm going to ask you a question. Overall, what do you think of this class of running backs? This is a great class of running backs. It's great at the top. It's deep. It's got scat backs, power backs, all-around type players, uh, speed, power. It's it's actually the best class in quite a while for running backs. Um, I'm excited about it. I know it's running back, so you temper your excitement here and there, but I'm, I'm thrilled with the way this class is turning out pre-draft. Yeah, there's some classes where the best running backs are Rashad Penny and uh, David Montgomery, and I'd say when you're looking at this draft class, those guys are like 8, 9, and 10. So it is extremely deep, and that's really exciting. Um, basically, yesterday we talked about the QB prospects and how there really isn't an elite prospect in this class, although some of them have elite traits like Young's pocket presence and Stroud's accuracy. But this running back class does have both. They have elite prospects and they have prospects with elite traits. And I'm going to start off with the guy that I think is the elite of the elite, which is Bijan Robinson. He is that once in a decade talent that reminds all of us why running backs are historically the most beloved position in football. All 22 here is trying try to change that. But this Bijan, watching Bijan's tape reminds me why. Uh, he's a do-it-all back, reminiscent of guys like Gale Sayers and Barry Sanders. And I don't think I've scouted a running back in my adult life with the vision, that elite trait, that vision that Robinson has. And that's not really all he has, right? When you watch his tape, you see patience, you see speed, you see agility, and you see play strength. Uh, B. John Robinson and uh, Michigan's Blake Corum had the highest single season rushing grades of the PFF college era. So just for perspective, what that means is from 2014 to 2013, so 10 years of grading college prospects, these two running backs had the highest grades they've ever had in a single season. That means that Bijan Robinson scored higher than Zeke, Lenny, Dalvin Cook, Nick Chubb, Saquon, Travis Etienne, Najee, Jonathan Taylor, Javante Williams. I could keep going. He's graded higher than all of them. Uh, at the combine, right? We were, you know, all excited to see what he can be. He's 5'11, 215. He ran a 446. His vert is 37 inches. His broad jump is 10'4. It's good. It's not, his combine was not all that, but it was good. But I don't think it matters at all. He is an elite prospect. And the first thing I'm going to ask you, Ray, is how far back do you think we have to go to find a prospect like Robinson? It's he's he's to me the best running back prospect since Saquon Barkley. Um, I don't think he's at that level from a pure physical ability standpoint, right? Uh, Saquon was just from a pure runner athleticism perspective was the best running back since Adrian Peterson when it came to that as a prospect, right? But the blend of speed, power, quickness, vision agility, balance, uh, just consistency in Bijan's game is the best since then, right? Uh, if you go back over seven or eight years or so, I think if I were to re-rank all running backs as prospects, I think it's Saquon one and then Bijan two. And then you can talk about Chubb, Zeke, and whoever else you want to throw in there. Uh, but I think over the last at least five years, Bijan's the top back since Saquon. I got really lucky when I did my rankings because the all 22 era does not include Saquon. So I did not have to include him in that conversation because I think it would have been really hard. I think those are the one and two. Um, Saquon, like you said, I agree, probably from a pure natural talent perspective, his body, his build, it's better. Uh, but Bichon might be a better football player. And that's that's crazy to say, but it might be true. Um, but the other question I wanted to ask you, and it's something I put in my uh, my little article I wrote today, is does Robinson become the first running back in NFL history of his caliber to fall outside of the top 10 of the NFL draft? Oh, man. It's too early. We still have a month. Uh, oh, man. <laughs> probably. People want to know. I, I think he does. I think so. And I think that's just the league evolving. And... Um, I think that's the right move. It, it's the right move. If you're picking in the top 10, you probably have bigger needs than running back. As I mentioned at the start, right, and we both agree, this class is deep. 
So sure, maybe you don't get Bijan Robinson if you take him ninth, but if you can get, uh, I don't even think Jameer Gibbs will last till forty. But if you're in the early forties and you take uh, Devin A. Chain, I think that's fine. I think there's backs that can be had in the middle of the second roundish that are still going to be great players, very productive and fit into offenses, but you don't pay that high draft capital cost to get them that we have seen really sort of hamper the team building strategies for multiple organizations pretty much in the last half decade or more. Uh, it's, it's tough to justify the investment in a running back when you're picking that highly regardless of how good they are, but especially if they're, especially if your offensive line is not great, right? Because mm -hmm. Saquon, you could say that in that draft class, he was the best pure talent of any position, but there, any running back is still somewhat dependent to a certain degree on their offensive line. And so if you don't have that taken care of, you're limiting the ability to maximize that running back strength. And given that the shelf life is, so short, you can't afford to waste two years before you can actually, you know, put the pedal to the metal and floor it because by that time their career is 40% over. So right. just uh, something to think about. It's yeah, I don't think top 10, but I don't think he lasts past 20. So this is the year then, right? This is the year that the NFL finally tells you because we have a prospect of this caliber that they just don't value running backs the same way, right? Because we're finally going to see that happen. Somebody this talented fall outside of the top 10. And that's with the jersey sales that are going to come with, with drafting him and all of the, the fan praise and love for a player like this. When I was actually thinking about it, right? Like when you think of any prospect of that elite caliber to fall outside of the top 10, how far back do you have to go to name one? Because when I was thinking about it, right? Like Quentin Nelson is a guard. He went top 10. Uh, I think... And this is debatable, but I think like Derwin James might be the answer because he was a safety. That no, went, you're, you're missing one. You're missing one. Am I? Who? Micah Parsons went what? 11, 12. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So All right. If you want to say Mulligan because it was a COVID year and he didn't play in in the 2020 college season, fine. But that that's the one. <laughs> that's the one. But agree, it's rare. And that draft also, like, you could argue that, like, the other head guys in front of him were also elite players. So it's, like, almost yeah. just, like, there was 11 elite players. So he was yeah. just the one guy that got left behind. But I think, like, the Derwin year, it's a little bit more like they just devalued safeties. But, okay, tell me about Gibbs. Yeah, so the other guy, Jameer Gibbs, right? And, boy, I just did a disservice by calling him the other the guy. The other right? guy. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Jameer Gibbs, 5'9". 199 pounds, uh, ran a 4.3640, uh, 1.52 10 yard split, which uh, is like 85th percentile. So very good there. 33 and a half inch vertical jump, uh, which is fine around average. But this is, it's cliche if you want to say he's like the lightning to Bijan's thunder because Bijan is more complete. And Jameer Gibbs is so much more than just pure speed. He's a great receiver, he's a smooth runner. He was an absolute stud at Georgia Tech before he even transferred to Alabama before the 2022 season. And he's just, in my opinion, a complete back. Yes, the pass blocking is a bit of a concern, but that's pass blocking. I don't, not that it doesn't matter. It matters. It's important, but I'm not worried about that when I have, when I'm drafting a rookie, I can work with them on that, right? I want to make sure they have the things you can't teach, like the balance, the natural hands, the ability to uh, win in the passing game downfield, make people miss. Be, uh, Jameer Gibbs has all of that. And so in a draft where I think at the top, I'm talking overall, the class might only have, I would say, 14 to 15 true first round grade talents, Jameer Gibbs is one of them. So we talk about the value of the running back position. I think two out of 15 first round talents in this class are running backs. So how that shakes out, I don't think you're going to see two in the top 15, but Jameer Gibbs is that good. And I think he's being overshadowed quite a bit because of Bijan Robinson and Bijan basically also having such a complete game, but having the more prototypical size. And so everyone is sort of fawning around Bijan and I'm saying, wait a minute. Sure. He's 199 pounds, but Gibbs is also that dude. So um, I think 
I think Gibbs is a feature back. You don't just look at his size or his weight and go, oh, okay, well, this is, this is someone I can only give the ball to eight times a game and then maybe some catches out of the backfield. No, this guy can do it all for you and be everything you need a running back to be. He is not a gadget or a spell type player. He is a legit dude. Wow. Okay. So two first round pick running backs, two guys that you're saying would be the top 15 of this group of prospects. And I agree with it. Um, I think he's super special as well. Love his running style. It's exactly what you want to see, right? It's electric. It's what the fans want to see. I struggle with 5'9", 190, 199. I struggle with that. Like how many backs in the league are truly bell, are truly bell cows at 5'9", 199? And how many have there been, you know, in the last 10 years? Can you name any? Uh, I get it. I, I mean, I get the concern, right? But... I, I don't care. <laughs> it's the no. best way I can describe it. I mean, so if you liken it to uh, someone like who I think his game actually models pretty well after, right? Uh, Tony Pollard is a little bit taller. He's six feet, uh, 209 listed, right? I think he's probably closer to 200, to, to be honest there. Uh, but their games are the same, right? And Gibbs is still... Like I say, he's only 5'9", so he's more compact. He's not as linear. He doesn't run high where he takes a lot of direct hits either. And I think that helps extend not his shelf life and career because running backs are just always going to have a short shelf life. But he doesn't take on many direct hits where you worry that his size is going to come into play because he is that smooth, that natural he anticipates, and he just contorts his body in a way that he's not taking many direct shots unless he's trying to deliver a blow. And... Yes, you're not going to mistake him for uh, for a power back by any means when he does that, but he does a pretty nice job naturally of protecting himself when running inside. So I get the size concern, but his play style, when you really watch him, I, it just eases those concerns for me overall. So um, I wouldn't have any reservations about it. And in fact, just for uh, this past season, he actually averaged more yards uh, through the a gap than he did outside of the tackles as a runner. So, wow. uh, he can muscle it up inside and in a way to where you don't see him wear down late in games because he's taking big hits and his legs are getting tired or anything of the sort. He can mm -hmm. do it all. Okay. You know, and his play style does remind me a lot of a guy like Kamara. Like it's that elusiveness. It's he's not taking hits. He, you're never going to get a clean shot on him. Even though he's not the biggest guy in the world, you're not going to be able to take his head off. So I, I agree with you there. Um, and then when I look at the teams that are running back needy, it's it's a really interesting year from that perspective too, because anybody that you look at the roster and say, I think that's a good spot for running back pre-free agency, they went and added two or three, like maybe not superstars, but but guys, right? Like guys that are going to get carries, uh, like the, even the Bears, right? Khalil Herbert, and then they have, they, they went and got uh, Devonta Foreman, right? Somebody like that. And it's like, they have a couple guys now. Do they need, are they going to value a running back in, at pick, uh, you know, 35? Are they really going to do that? Like when they have all these other needs? I would say no, but a team that I like, and especially for Gibbs is, is the Eagles at pick 30. Like, could that happen? Maybe, um, you know, they, they went and signed a couple guys too. So it's, it's kind of uh, another one of those situations. But when I look at a team that I think could, he could be really successful in, you know, that's the team with the offensive line you want him running behind, a team that's going to make sure that he has, um, you know, time and he's not getting hit in the backfield. Uh, you know, I think that's a great destination for him. But is there any other destinations that you see as easy fits for him? And do you think there are any, like, logical running back uh, needy teams right now? Hmm. You know, it's, it's interesting. Um, people will point to the Eagles, and I get it. I just think anywhere late in the, in the first round, if you're looking at some of the names that are going to be available, I mean, am I going to take Michael Mayer over someone like Jameer Gibbs? From a pure prospect standpoint, I would have someone like Gibbs rated way higher. So when you're talking late twenties, early thirties, I'm not, I, I'm, I'm not going to pass on a talent like Gibbs for someone like that. When you get to some of those names, like even the Adetamiwa, Adab, the, the Northwestern guy, I, I tried to give it a shot. Um, <laughs> Or, you know, Felix Uzoma, like when you get to that level of prospect at the end of the first, I have a hard time 
passing up Gibbs for for guys like that. So I think the I think the Eagles make the most sense, but also a team that sneakily they've kind of been, you know, trying to get another running back in there and and push out their primary guy. I think Cincinnati. I know they still are looking at offensive line and so forth, but depending on if there's a run at tackle, how far are they going to reach, right? Whereas uh, Mixon's getting sort of late in that contract, right? And they might be able to get out of that sooner than later. You get someone like Jameer Gibbs in there along with the other weapons on that offense, and he opens it up even more in the passing game too. I think that's another underrated fit. Yeah, that's a good one. And I mean, technically, Jonah Williams is still under contract. I know he demanded a trade, mm-hmm. but they can easily just say, no, you're staying and you're playing right tackle and uh, and it'll happen, right? So I, I do like that fit as well. Um, I think I was secretly holding out hope that Bijan would fall there. Uh, but if he does fall there, that would be insane. I think he is worthy of a top 10 pick, um, but he probably won't. He'll probably be top 15. If he ends up going l- late first round, it would be amazing. But that's it for today. Uh, we'll we'll be back tomorrow talking more um, about actually how these guys rank, right? So we're going to go into QB rankings. We're going to go into running back rankings. It's going to be a, re- a really fun episode. And potentially all 22 Bobby will be back on the mic. So we're looking forward to that. And thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Um, if you haven't yet, please give us a follow on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok at all22 underscore PFF. And leave us a review wherever you listen to this podcast, whether YouTube, Apple, or Spotify. And then if you haven't yet, go to our website and uh, sign up for our waiting list. It's there. Uh, we will be opening up signups soon. And you want to be ready because there might be some advantageous pricing for you if you get in early. So I can't say more about that now, but uh, TBD. Okay, thank you so much for tuning in. We'll talk soon. Bye. Let's go. Let's go.